All right, so we're having a great time up in the Upper Peninsula, up in the Upper. All right, we're having a great time here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. A couple weeks ago, I ended up uh, finding uh, some people up here in the Keweenaw who homestead and they have a blog and so we decided to see if they'd let us stop by their place and they wanted to have us out. So I'm going to introduce you to them right now. Hi, I'm Tim. And I'm Lisa with White Sky Woods Homestead here on the beautiful Keweenaw Peninsula and living the year at life. last season and um, we get some cast offs from the local grocery stores yep. which is a great supplement for them but basically this garden we just let it volunteer because we're like I don't know tomatoes are growing and squash and cucumbers are growing and it's all yeah. yep it's all thanks to the pigs last year so yeah and if they don't ripen I mean we probably won't eat them but it'll just go back to the pigs So we have um, like a lot of wild trees around here and stuff that have grown probably from the original apples on the homestead. So like these are both apple trees here. And then we have wild blueberries growing all over the property. Yeah, and they're, these are high bush blueberries. Yeah. We have some high bush and we have some low bush and they grow differently and through different times. So we had like three or four weeks of blueberries this year, which was really awesome. But that's one of the things that appealed to us about this place is like there was food here already yeah. for us to yeah. self-sustain with. And obviously you can't sustain yourself off of blueberries, but I feel like we did almost. <laughs> if you had enough, I could. Yeah. Yes. And I, we just like forage as we walk around the property. This is our high tunnel area. Because oh, okay. you have to have something established before you can... So this is actually, I believe this is, um, it's a, like a heritage corn. It's from Oneida. Um, oh, oh no. the white yeah, it is. So I can show you some of it when we go inside too, but it's uh, right. an Oneida white corn and it's a flint corn. So basically this would be ground up into meal um, or you could grind it up for chickens or something like that probably. And there's like, a, I think I have a blue corn that I threw in there and some green. Okay. Kind of flint corn. And then we also planted squash. There's a lot of volunteers in here from the Pigs, all the tomatoes are volunteers. And then there's beans in there as well. So we had two pigs um, last fall, which wasn't part of the homestead plan. We never ever talked to pigs, but we brought two pigs home. And then um, we decided we would try to breed them and that worked. And then we actually butchered the male hog. And then the female sow had her babies like right after Father's Day, June, mid-June. And so now she has 10 babies and they've been um, well, we had to separate them for a little while just to wean, but then now that they're weaned and they're back with mama, basically, they're rotating pasture. So each one of those piglets is sold as a whole hog, and um, people basically put a down payment together, and then they'll get charged by the pound upon butchering. Okay. And we have a local butcher, which is awesome. So we just have dates scheduled with him, and he'll take care of all of that. Is he USDA? Butcher? He's not USDA, which is why we're selling the pig and not the meat. Got it. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So well, what we did then was replanted these patches. You can kind of see how they're successively mm -hmm. growing. It's just a ryegrass turnip sort of mix. So then they'll come back into that. So basically, they're primarily on a on a pasture diet, but they get supplemental feed, which is either it is hog feed. Yeah or grocery scraps and basically every apples. scrap, every weed I've pulled lots out of the garden, of apples. apples, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is a big pig. <laughs> yep, so that's Brandy. <laughs> that's it. a big pig. <laughs> we think she's probably about 400 pounds. Oh, she's yeah, gotta be at least that now. So this is um, apples from last time, last, the other weekend we pressed apples, so this is just all the off the smush basically. And I mean, look at this. She's like a big dog. <laughs> a very big dog. Yep. I feel a little more bonded to her because she's had the babies. I think I would like to maybe always have a pig or two just to have for ourselves in the freezer at the end of the fall season. 
But we found that keeping two grown pigs over winter is pricey. <laughs> and um, I mean, if you're doing it for yourselves, it probably doesn't pay off. No, we no. did all natural. Basic, she, she was in the little paddock under the shed and she had that whole area over there. And we, it was really neat actually. We knew she was gonna be farrowing. And um, we came home and she didn't come out, which she's like hand fed, you know? So <laughs> she, yeah, I'm like, something's going on. Going on. <laughs> and we went back there and she was just laying there. She looked a little tired, you know? And we went back and looked and there was a leg coming out. So we actually saw the first piglet get born, oh, cool. which was so cool. And then we just um, left her for the mm -hmm. night. We were just told, the best thing you can do is be completely hands off, which is much yeah. more our style. We don't, we want nature to do its thing and not intervene with that, within reason, obviously. Yep. So the next morning we went out and there they were. <laughs> <laughs> They've grown a lot. But Look at how much earth that she can move with her nose know, in one swipe. She's got a big plot on her nose. It's pretty amazing. Sustaining this amount of pigs on a small area is very challenging. We have to move them at least once a week. And now we're, you know, they obviously do some damage, mm -hmm. which we usually rake over to try to get rid of the big wallows. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's what I'm a little worried about. I'm like, what's this gonna be like in three months? And they're late pigs, because she just went on her first breeding cycles. So we were just stuck with this due date, you know? and most pigs would be going in about a month and they still have four, three more months. We were really happy because we were, I was concerned. I'm like, oh yeah. my God, we're just gonna have to sell them as feeder pigs and that'll be fine. Um, and we can maybe sell some to people we know as pasture raised um, hog. And we ended up selling every one of them as pasture raised hog. You guys don't actually get a lot of snow here. No. no. Right here. Yeah, like right maybe here. 120 inches is all, Probably right? Probably won't. <laughs> well, that's really... They call it the banana what, belt here. That's like yeah. half of what you get mm -hmm. 20 minutes north of oh, here. Yeah. yeah, everywhere else. See, and we were... We did not do any research. We just like came here and we're like, this is <laughs> hey, beautiful. This is great. <laughs> yeah, and we put an offer in and then that was that. And then now that we've moved here, I'm so glad we're here. Yeah. yeah. Because um, last winter, which was our first winter, I was taking a class um, in Calumet. Mm -hmm. And so I would leave here every afternoon and I would drive to Calumet. And here it would be like this blue sky. There'd be snow on the ground. It'd be wonderful. I would start going up the hill to Calumet and wow. suddenly there was a blizzard. Yeah. Not just clouds, <laughs> yeah, but a yeah. blizzard. blizzard. Yep. I did class twice a week and I'm telling you that was like 75% of the time. Yeah. yeah. So I say it's always sunny in Jacobsville. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's, yeah. yeah. What brought you to the UP in the first place? Chance. <laughs> yeah. We were just looking for a right price in our property and we, we were looking in northern Wisconsin a little more and we realized that anything we wanted to afford there was basically swamp which wasn't going to meet our home setting. And we just ended up looking and looking and looking and stumbled across a property up here. And we came out to look at this one and then we offered right away. We just felt right about it. I was working full time. Yep. Um, Tim was working full time. We, we dabbled. We had some beehives in town, which was not. We knew how to can and stuff like that. So we did, we kept rabbits for our winter and yeah. butchered the rabbits. And it was kind of like little tests here and there just to see how it would go, which actually was really useful. But yeah. it was still nothing like what we've what experienced here, yeah. So do you feel like this has been a lot warmer in the winter time than where you were in Wisconsin or no? I think in Wisconsin we would get like these just cold temperatures and there was like barely any snow and it was like, yeah. you That's how it is in you Minnesota. can't even go and yeah. do yeah. snow related things yeah. then. Yeah, but here we definitely cold. have snow and we definitely have cold, but at it's, least there's snow when it's cold. It's so you can, it's you like know, you can go out doing something. Yeah, exactly. yes. yeah. It's a long winter, but it's a real winter. Yes. And we snowshoed, it was so awesome. I'm like, we're snowshoeing on Lake Superior. How cool is this, you know? <laughs> So back here is actually where we were originally going to build our yurt. So now the goats are back here clearing up our area.
happy we built this mother of mine because I'm like, oh my gosh, where are we going to go with all this stuff? Oh, in the winter? Oh my yes. gosh. Because <laughs> you, you kids went out and played and then they all came in and like stripped all their winter stuff off. It was just a pile of, it, yeah, it was just so wonderful though. Wow, look, at the look how cool is this? Yeah. yeah. Plain, this is adorable. Get up. Where did all the wood come from? That's a great question. We actually own a small lumber mill, a portable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so half, about half the wood in here is harvested from our own property. That yurt worked out great because we worked with this company to basically design the yurt exactly how it is. So the blueprints were based specifically on the bathroom being right there, and you know the flooring being the way it is, and we actually built up with the concrete blocks to help with the winter snow time. Um, so everything was designed to kind of plan for that. And then it gave us more room for the loft too, which is where the kids stay. Yeah, the dome opens, which is cool, but we don't really nice. do it that often. Yeah, but you could. Yeah, it actually gets this amazing ventilation in here. I bet. But the heat is really nicely regulated in here in summer. It stays nice and cool if we keep it closed. And then in winter, it stays pretty warm because we went for that passive solar design. Um, so it's been good. There's radiant flooring, radiant heat from the flooring, and then the wood stove that gives us the most of our heat. And I see some garden treasures over there. Yeah, all of our garlic and onions came in. Thanks for having us out yeah, again. Thanks for coming. All right, see ya. Yeah, bye bye. Bye. bye.